Hi, thanks for coming back for the uh, administration portion of the Fast Tracker 3.5 uh, video. We're going to go into the administration, meaning everything that you can do on the server, some things that you can do uh, from the client side workstations as well. Uh, but the first thing we'll do here is uh, go into our <coughs> admin application. And as we saw before, we go into the uh, Facilis Fast Tracker, Fast Tracker admin. I'm going to dock that right down here so it's easy for me to get to next time. Um, the admin <coughs> password, the admin user is uh, default for us um, with no password. You can change that. You can make other users, and I'll get into why you might want to do that as well. Um, first thing that pops up here is my auto indexes. Auto indexes are watch folders. They're basically everything that you're indexing on a regular basis. Uh, here I have most everything set to one hour. One hour interval, it'll go and look at that volume, at that folder, wherever I chose, and find if there is any new media to index. And it just basically compares what it's done before with what's there now. So with all these, uh, with all these auto indexes here, um, I've already indexed everything on my system. So uh, I can go ahead and remove a lot of these auto indexes uh, from here to show you sort of how we start up. Uh, because a lot of these auto indexes were created from the global indexing, which I'll I'll show you how to do right now. Which is really, if you're installing to a, um, a server that already exists and you already have volumes, you already have projects, the global index setting is probably the best way to go. And uh, that's where we'll start. Uh, because up here in the file menu, I see I have uh, something called server global index configuration. Uh, and that is uh, the method by which uh, we go in, find the volumes that are available uh, for indexing, and then present those to you as something that you can you can use to create new index tasks based on those individual volumes. Um, so, uh, I mean, if you want to just go crazy and, and select everything, that's fine. Uh, what will happen is you'll create index tasks for each one of these. That will be set to a manual interval for repeat. You can set that to every hour. Uh, it'll be set to skip files below a certain size. I have 50 KB here. That's going to that's gonna be high or low depending on uh, what you're doing. If you're bringing in lots of camera cards with lots of metadata files in the camera cards that really don't mean much for you as you're uh, assembling the, the timelines, then you may have that higher. Or you may just have the index extensions uh, written out so that you don't include those. For example, I could type in here uh, MXF, MOV, uh, MP4, if those are normally what I'm bringing in all the time, maybe WAV files, um, then you know that's all it's going to take. It's going to disregard everything else. Um, if you don't have those index, index extensions listed, it'll take all files. So the only thing you have to exclude is the skip files below a certain size. Um, sequence handling tells you, tells the server, tells the, the application how you want to manage file sequences. So most of the file sequences we see are uh, OpenEXR, whether DPX, TIFF, that kind of thing. Um, if you want to use sequence handling by extensions, then you, you type in the sequence extensions that you want here. DPX and EXR are a good case here. If I want to add uh, Targa and TIFF, I can do that as well. Um, and if I just sort of take away everything, uh, or if I just say sequence handling all, it just means that anytime it sees a file that has a sequential name, it's going to combine those into a single asset. You may not want that all the time because there are some cases where uh, from the camera you may have multiple files that are being generated in sort of a sequentially numbered format and it could fool us into thinking that that's meant to be sequential. So you will kind of want to do use the extensions here uh, because normally these are the, the formats that will be coming in sequential. Um, so otherwise, I mean, I'm not going to choose all of these, but I'll choose a few here just to show you uh, sort of the uh, the ways that we can have these show up. Um, so I'll go ahead and go to Catalog Global. Um, you can call it everything. You can call it whatever you want. It happens to be called Global, and I made the catalog. Uh, and Create Index Task. Uh, so if I OK out of that, what this did was this went through and created four different index tasks in the auto index that uh, are uh, matched up with four different volume names. And there's no path because it just takes the root of that volume and says, I'm going to index everything. So as you can see here, it's gone through and, and went from indexing, and then it went to idle for all of them because it's already indexed everything in all those volumes, so it doesn't need to do anything. Uh, but it will show you that the last time it, it attempted this was today, just now. You know, So it, it knows that the last time it ran, the last time it tried to run, all those are there. Minimum file size is showing up here. You can change any of these if you want. 
So if I see that uh, my my uh, Daniels volume, uh, if I know that it has some files that are very small but that I want, uh, I can change this so that uh, it now goes down to you know 10k or something, and then update that selected. And that just that uh, one auto index changes to a, a different um, requirement for minimum file size. And then the next time I go through and run that and it goes through indexing, if there's anything there that's that's between 10 and 50k, it'll pick it up, uh, which is what that size, minimum file size is meant to do. Um, and that's really how you create auto indexes. If I want to create an auto index that is not through the global indexing setting, all I do is select a catalog here, for example, my demo catalog that I made previously, uh, and just say index on server. Uh, it gives me a path and says, okay, where do you want to index? Uh, okay, FS vol, because I'm in version 8. If I'm in version 7, that's going to be C volumes. Uh, it's C FS vol because I'm in version 8. Um, and then there's DJI volume. I can select that to go. And so that went through indexed real quick because there's nothing in there that's not already in the database, so it, it's now idle as well. Uh, but um, all of these are in catalogs. Catalogs, of course, have different um, settings when it comes to uh, how you, what it does with the file once it's indexed. Uh, will it create a proxy or a preview file? Uh, those are things that we went over before, uh, but we're going to go over those again in a minute when we get into the rest of the, uh, the administration.